Hey guys, it's Caitlin, aka Super Loopy Woman here on YouTube. It's been a while since I made a video, so I wanted to kind of get back at it. I've been pretty active on Instagram, I just have been totally neglecting my YouTube channel. So, um, if you're new here, thanks for checking out my channel. Um, feel free to check out my Instagram as well, I post a lot more content there. Um, and thanks so much for checking me out. Um, so today I am going to make a video about Ben Lista. Um, so I've been on Ben Lista for, I'm not sure, maybe about a year now. Um, I had filmed a video previously for it, um, but didn't like it at all, so I never posted it, and I've just been really behind with posting content. So I want to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial for how to inject Ben Lista. So today we're talking about Ben Lista subcutaneous injection. Um, whenever Ben Lista first came out, um, maybe like around 10 years ago or so, it was only available in an in infusion. So you'd have to go to a doctor's office or an infusion center to get it infused, um, similar to like a chemotherapy or if you've ever needed um, like iron infusions. Um, so that's kind of the, the process with that, which is where they'll like have a bag of it and then it'll slowly drip through your system over a period of time. Um, since then they have um, come out with the subcutaneous injection version where they just send you pre-filled um, auto injector pens and you do it yourself um, every week or I think with new lupus nephritis it's a little bit different it's a little bit more often but um, what makes Ben Lista so cool is it is once a week um, injection and it is the I believe the first drug to specifically treat lupus in over 50 years so it was kind of a huge breakthrough um, for the lupus community and they have since come out with another one since so I feel like we are on the right track to getting lupus properly treated um, and maybe one day cured. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go over um, what they send you. I get um, a Sharps container. I have way too many of these things. I feel like they send me them all the time even though I say no I don't need another Sharps container. But I've got a ton of them. So cool. Um, they will send you some alcohol swabs so that you can clean the area where you are going to be injecting. Um, sometimes they send me like a bandage. Um, I don't really typically need a bandage after there's really minimal to no bleeding for me personally. Um, so I don't typically need to, like I'll just hold pressure um, maybe with like a, a tissue for a couple of seconds and it typically stops. I don't typically need a bandage after. Um, so let's go over what's in here. Um, so it says once weekly Ben Lista. I'm not going to try to say the long name. Maybe I will just for fun. Belly Moo Map. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have tried it. Stop judging me. Um, so this is an injection um, for subcutaneous use. Um, has a picture of like the actual size of one of the auto injector pins. Has all kinds of information on the back, um, just about how to properly store it, um, and just some information about the manufacturer and the manufacturing progress uh, process rather. So comes with enough for one month. So um, for standard lupus, I believe the injection is just once per week. So four will get you through a month. Um, unless your doctor told you otherwise, then follow their instructions because sometimes it's a little bit different. Um, <clears throat> so they also come in like these plastic containers where you're, um, so you know for sure it's like sterile, hasn't been touched, it's sealed, 
Um, so we'll, we'll open that in a minute. Um, but it comes with four of them. It does come with a leaflet of information that will rip into tons of pieces, apparently. Um, and it just goes over in very detailed instructions. Like this is But wait, there's more. <laughs> there's a whole nother one. Yeah. There's a lot of instructions. Um, so I've been doing this myself for about a year. So I don't think I'm going to read all of this to you because if you get them last day, you're going to get this whole packet yourself and it will tell you what to do and what not to do. But I will go over the steps just so I'm properly telling you everything and I'll show you how I do my injections. All right. So I'm going to show you the parts of the Ben Lissa auto injector. So I'm just going to unpeel this. Um, I already sanitized my hands, so my hands are clean. Um, it's really cold because you have to keep it in the refrigerator. Um, so I took it out about 10 minutes ago. I'm going to leave it out for about another 10. Depends on how slow I talk um, before I inject it. Um, you want to try to inject it when it's room temperature. Um, it just, for me at least, it's, it's less painful. Um, in the pamphlet, it does recommend um, sit it, letting it sit out for 30 minutes. Um, so I've probably had it out for about 10, and I'll probably blab some more before we do it. So um, it'll be okay. Um, they just want you to naturally let it get to room temperature. Don't try to warm it up in like the microwave or something like that. It's sad that you have to say that, but there are people out there that do some things. <sighs> okay. So this is the auto injecta pin. Okay, you can see the medicine in there. Actually, I don't know if you really can, but it's in there. And you can see a little air bubble. Um, also on the back has the lot number and expiration date and everything like that. Should you ever need it, you should always really check that before you inject yourself. Um, just to make sure that what you're using is good and not expired and ready to go. Um, I do believe that they recommend you write down the lot number and expiration date, um, just so if there's a recall, you're aware. Um, but I have all of that information in my online pharmacy app information center thing. So I don't uh, typically go the extra mile, but you definitely can. I know some medications like um, Humira is really good at it. They have in the app, like you put down like where you injected, what time, the, um, the lot number and expiration date. Um, and it has everything where you can just put all that information in, um, in the app. So they, they are really killing it. Like I've done a couple different injectable medications and Humira has got it down to a science man. They have really great customer service. They have really great um, like tools that you can use. They provide you with a, um, not a lunchbox, but like a little container where you can take your medication with you if you travel. And it's like specifically put on there, like it's for medical purposes. Um, so you don't lose it or, you know, so, if you go on a flight or something, you can make clear, like, this is medication and I need to have it with me. Um, so Humera is killing the game. Like, they are the best company I've worked with as far as injectables go. Um, Enbrel is, like, a little less cool. They're, like, a little bit more lackadaisical um, with, with the features that they offer the patients. And then Ben Lista, you know, they... The company that makes it, GSK, they are really good in the aspect where they will send you 
tons and tons of information in like lupus health trackers in the mail with like little calendars and you can make um, notes about any appointments you've had and stuff like that but to my knowledge they don't offer like a carrying case um, and even if you're not traveling it's nice to have so like I don't have to have this just sitting in my refrigerator I can have it tucked away in like the lunchbox type thing where it's clearly labeled that it's medication. Um, I don't know why, but I really like that feature. Um, so the design of this is really cool. It has like a little hole here. Um, it just helps making taking the cap off easier. Um, I'm sure they know that patients with lupus or what have you are going to have some trouble um, like taking caps off of things, even like medication bottles, sometimes it's hard. So they were thoughtful enough to put this little hole here that you can kind of grab onto and easily take it off, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, all right, so we went over that. Um, all right, so it says the supplies that you'll need for the injection are the Benlista auto injector, um, an alcohol swab, and a gauze pad or cotton ball which like I said I don't really need to use I don't need to use a bandage or a cotton ball um, typically I just don't bleed very much um, and then the sharps container of course um, anytime you have anything sharp like this a needle um, you want to make sure you dispose of it properly so that nobody gets hurt um, all right so step one is we're gonna gather and check our supplies so we're going to remove the sealed tray containing the auto injector from the refrigerator. So that was this that we opened. Um, find a comfortable, well lit and clean surface and place the following supplies within reach. Uh, we're going to have our Benlista auto injector, an alcohol swab, a gauze pad or a cotton ball, and a sharps container. Um, do not perform the injection if you don't have all of these supplies. So just do what they say. Um, the next super important step is like I already said, you're going to peel back the film on the tray and remove the auto injector. Um, and then you are going to make sure to check that expiration date and, um, don't use it if the expiration date has passed. Pretty self-explanatory, but I have to say it for a reason. People do weird things sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're going to make sure to check that. You're going to let the medication come to room temperature over about 30 minutes. They recommend 30 minutes. Um, just around there is fine. You just want it to not be super cold when you inject it because that can actually be more painful. Um, yeah, so don't warm the auto injector in any other way. So don't put it in the microwave. Don't put it in hot water. Don't put it in sunlight. Don't do anything weird. Just let it get to room temp by itself um and you're not going to want to remove this cap until you are 100 percent ready to inject um so it also says um you're going to want to inspect the window so that's this part here inspect the window you're going to want to make sure that um the fluid inside is colorless um shouldn't have any color um, maybe slightly yellow, but nothing other than that. Um, and I just dropped it. <sighs> okay. Um, so make sure that it doesn't look cloudy or discolored or have any, like, suspicious particles in that little window there. Um, basically it should just be clear um you can see like the air bubble in there um okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose where we want to inject um the places that they recommend are the abdomen or like the belly um around the belly button area or you can do your thigh um so either one of those and i think um what you're not supposed to do is inject in the same place every time so kind of make your rounds um there are special instructions for if you need to do two injections 
which like I said is um, you're only going to do that if your provider specifically says that to you. Um, and yeah, so avoid injecting the same site each time or in areas where it's tender, bruised, red, or irritated anyway. Um, so you can do um, the belly button area, which is like the area within about two inches from your navel um, or the tops of your thighs. So what you're going to do is you're going to wash your hands, which I already did, and sanitize. Um, clean the injection site. You're going to take one of these and clean the area off that you're going to be injecting. Um, what I like to do is just take one out, um, kind of bunch it up in my finger, put it on the spot where I want to inject, and then just keep going in a circle. Um, maybe get a little bit wider so the whole area is nice and sanitized. Um, and then you can just throw that away. Um, all right, so yeah, and then obviously after you sterilize, don't touch the area again um, with your fingers or anything else because then you'll have to sterilize it again. You're gonna wanna not remove the cap until right before you're ready to inject. So you can remove this cap by either pulling or you can twist it off. Um, it's super easy. It just comes right off. That's the little lid and that's where the needle is. So you can see. I'm going to show you how we do this. I'm going to do, I'm going to do my belly button area. I did just have hip surgery so I have my brace on so it might be a little weird but um, I will show you what we are going to do. Okay. So let's see if you can see. Pull my brace down a little bit. So belly button. Uh, I have my brace on, so that's why I look like a super chunky monk. Um, so we're gonna take the alcohol swab, put it here. I gently get wider with it. And you're going to take the Benlista pen and you're going to put it at a 90 degree angle. Um, so, I'm sorry, I'm like stuck in a weird position. So you're going to put it at a 90 degree angle and press all the way down. You'll hear a click. And you'll hear the second click and you can bring it off. You see that circle? That is where the injection happened. There's a tiny little dot of blood, um, nothing major. So super easy. It wasn't painful. Um, it literally takes just a couple of seconds to do. Um, you'll notice that while you're holding it at the 90 degree and it it's between the first click and the second click. This area here where the medicine was, um, it is going to change to purple. So that's just showing that all the medicine's out um, and it was it was pushed out. And there's no more medicine left in there. So you did it correctly. So it's at 90 degree angle. Um, it's, it's different than some of the other injector pens where there's no button to click. You just literally put it down and the pressure of you putting it down triggers the, um, the syringe to eject the medication into your body. Um, so there's no button if that's what you're used to. Um, some of the other pens like Humira and Brol, they have the actual button. This is like spring loaded where you just put it down and the pressure makes it work. So as long as you hear the beginning click, wait. You'll hear the second click and you know where you can take it away. Um, so the whole injection process probably takes about maybe 15 to 20 seconds. So it's really, really quick. Um, I'll show you this again. So you can see the needle in there. It's just different compared to some of the other pens. Um, now, as far as putting this in the sharps container, 
what they do not like you to do is try to recap it. Um, that goes for anything, any, um, any injectable medication that you use. They will, really want you to avoid putting the cap back on because you're at a high risk to accidentally poke yourself, stab yourself. Um, so listen to those rules. Um, I mean, I just got done putting this medication into my body, so I am already have it in. I'm going to recap it just because I'm OCD. Um, just be careful if you do that. You're not supposed to, so don't listen to me. Um, you know, don't recap it because you could poke yourself again. Um, and then you're going to get your handy dandy sharp container, open it, see, and put it in. Um, don't ever try to like go back in to grab something. That's a no, no. Don't do that either. Um, and then make sure it's sealed. You'll hear like a click. There's many different kinds of sharps containers. They all look different. I probably have, like I have a ton of them and they all look different. Um, but just make sure to keep this closed, maybe up high away from where a kid could get it. Um, you don't want them going in to explore and get stuck with something that's just really, really bad. So um, be responsible with where you put your sharps container and how you dispose of your sharps container and what it contains. And then you can also take another look at the injection site. Um, there could be like a small little bit of blood. Um, for that, you can use a gauze or a tissue or a cotton ball. Um, and you shouldn't have to put a band-aid on it but if you want to you definitely can okay so it's been a couple of minutes so i'm gonna stand up and show you my injection site a little bit of blood nothing major nothing coming out actively that's not even getting this wet so so um yeah, all in all, Benless has been a pretty great medication that I've used. Um, my top two biologics would be the Benlista and the Humera. Um, I just really particularly liked those ones. Um, and GlaxoSmithKline, the company that makes this medication, is really good. They have a lot of support. Um, like, if you can't afford your medication, they're happy to help you just reach out. Um, they have lots of resources they can send you in the mail as well. Um, if your insurance doesn't cover it, they have a payment program. It is rather expensive. So I don't know 100% off the top of my head, but I want to say out of pocket, it's between $5,000 and $9,000 a month. I am very grateful to be on medical assistance through the state of Pennsylvania and they cover it at 100% so I don't have to worry about even a copay or anything. Um, but if you have insurance, if you don't have insurance and you're, you're, you're having struggles paying for it, um, they do have a program that can help you so don't forget to reach out to them. They're super nice. Um, they really are a great company at GSK. Um, yeah, so that's a typical Ben Lista injection for you. Um, yeah, sorry if I sound a little weird. I'm getting over a cold and I just, I know I sound kind of nasally. <laughs> but um, yeah, thanks for watching. I would really appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up down below um, and hit the subscribe button. It's totally free for you, but it really does help me out and I would really appreciate it. Thanks for checking out another one of my videos, guys.